Hello, I'm Dr. Gary Krakoff, a naturopath and pharmacist at Johnson Compounding and Wellness Center in Waltham. We specialize in custom compounding and helping our clients obtain the best health they can naturally. I would like to welcome you to the first edition of Staying Healthy Naturally. This is going to be a show that focuses on natural ways to help you achieve optimum health and wellness. Today's show is going to be on colds and flu. We're entering into that season now. I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Sarah Byrne, a family physician at Visions Healthcare in Dedham. And Dr. Byrne, thanks so much for joining us today. And before we jump into cold and flu, could you tell us a little bit about your practice and mm -hmm. your setting? Sure, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm a primary care doctor, so I see patients from birth, basically birth to death, um, all ages, and I practice at a, a Visions Healthcare. So in addition to primary care, we also do something called functional medicine, um, which is just sort of a different approach to um, patients and wellness and health. Um, we look at different aspects of the body and trying to help the body function optimally. So. Um, a good examples, maybe instead of looking at one problem in you know ten minutes or something that you have at the time, we try to spend more time with patients. Really look at their entire you know um, person and wellness and all aspects of their health, and hopefully help people feel a lot better. <laughs> and that's excellent, and that really fits into what we do over at Johnson's mm -hmm. in that you're not just what can I do to suppress a symptom. It's mm -hmm. more spending the time and digging into mm -hmm. the why behind the problem because if you fix the why right. usually three or four different problems mm -hmm. get better that's true okay <laughs> um, we hear a lot about cold and flu and how to protect mm -hmm. ourselves and one of the things I get a lot of questions is people come in and say how do I know if I have a cold or mm -hmm. the flu what are some of the differences sure um, so a typical cold is going to be not as severe as the flu so colds can be many many different viruses cause a cold yeah. um, I'm sure everybody out there has had one <laughs> and typically you might start with maybe a little bit of a sore throat some runny nose, congestion, maybe develop a cough. Most of the time it's fairly mild um, and other than some lingering mild symptoms, you know, maybe lasts for a week or two at the most. Um, influenza uh, virus causes the, the flu, so the actual right. flu, tends to be a bit more severe. So um, symptoms that you might uh, have with the flu especially the achiness, you know, high fever, chills, really pretty knocked Every out. Every joint aches. Everything aches. You just want to stay in bed, not really something, you know, I'll just go to work today. You're really um, down for the count, typically with the flu. Um, maybe headaches, so, um, and it tends to come on a little bit more rapidly than a, than a cold that kind of creeps up on you. So if one day you're good, next day you feel pretty crummy, um, with those symptoms could be Probably the flu. The flu. And what a lot of people don't realize is you're contagious mm -hmm. before you're symptomatic and That's even true. after it mm -hmm. hits. So one of the things a lot of companies were finding are doing is it used to be if you weren't in the hospital or God forbid <laughs> dead, you're supposed to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Now a lot of companies are saying if you don't feel well, mm -hmm. stay home, get some rest because usually then you're only down for a day or two instead of the week or 10 days and you're not right. infecting all your coworkers. Right. That's wise to only have one person out versus the entire now office, you, probably. So. Yeah. Um, another thing that, for most of us, cold and flu is just an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. You know, work gets backed up. We mm -hmm. can't take care of the kids or whatever. But for certain groups of the population, it can be mm -hmm. deadly, whether mm -hmm. it be the flu or a severe cold. Mm -hmm. What group should really be careful and really follow what's going on because mm -hmm. it could be dangerous. So we think about uh, groups of people whose immune system isn't as robust as other people. Um, so infants or really small kids are maybe more susceptible, um, pregnant women, um, elderly people. Uh, I, I want to say maybe 90% of people who, who actually die from influenza um, are over 65. So it's going to be kind of an older population. Um, also people who have different health problems. So if you um, have diabetes, 
your immune system is not as robust as somebody without. Um, also, people with lung problems like asthma or um, COPD, you know, heart problems. So really chronic illnesses um, are going to make someone a little bit more susceptible. Okay. So the healthier we can stay, the right. better chance we'll have of not having a problem. And there are a lot of things we can do to boost the immune system. Um, there's a lot of publicity now. There's been literature for years, and it's finally making it mainstream about probiotics mm -hmm. and how healthy they are. And can you talk to our viewers about how a probiotic can help us? Sure. So if you think about um, our our digestive system, so yeah. how do how would viruses or bacteria enter the body? So our skin is pretty good at you know most of the time protecting most of our body. So ways that these microbes can get in, either you breathe them in or orally. So. Um, what, what we think about is how our, our gut helps out. And say the microbes come in through, you know, you touch something, somebody coughed on it, and you put it into your mouth, and then, you know, you swallow it, goes down your digestive tract. So our digestive tract actually has a huge percentage of our immune cells. So, you know, a big part of our immune system is, is in the gut. They say about 60% of our... It's a huge yeah. amount. So, you know, normally the, I kind of describe what their function is, is say, you know, you introduce a bacteria. Well, that's something from the outside world. You obviously don't want to just let into your body willy nilly. So its job is to really decide what's friend and what's foe. And it's designed to do that. And so um, some of the functions that it has, it can, you know, when bacteria enter the body, it can help to, if they're making toxins, it can neutralize those toxins. Um, it can help, um, maybe compete for um, nutrients and so it elbows out some of the, the bad stuff that shouldn't be there. It's going to produce things that help boost the immune system, um, like antibodies, which are things that help to tag the, the bad stuff, the microbes, and yeah. so that your immune system can clear them out. So it actually does does a lot. <laughs> oh, definitely. And each of the different bacteria have a, have a, the healthy bacteria have a specific mm -hmm. function. And I like to use an analogy almost like a lawn. If you take care of the soil mm -hmm. so the environment is right and you put down some grass seed, it keeps the weeds at check. Exactly. And so by That's keeping good the good bacteria <laughs> in there, it helps keep the candida and some of the opportunistic mm -hmm. organisms of parasites mm. at bay, which is very important. And there's a million probiotics out mm -hmm. there. They're and very overwhelming sometimes. Yeah, and <laughs> any tips on how to choose mm -hmm. a good probiotic? So I would say you want to um, go somewhere that is a reputable place. So if you want somebody else to do the work for you, you know, you're going to pick maybe a health food store, someone who's going to be a little bit more conscious about what types of products that they have and, you know, that they're selling. Um, you're going to, probiotics come from anywhere from, you know, some millions of species to 200 billion mm -hmm. or more. So there's a huge range. That sounds kind of weird, but, you, you know, you want at least, you know, um, I tell people 15 to 20 billion would be a good amount and to look for. And multiple strains. You don't yeah. want to load up just on exactly. one of the lactobacillus or one of the bifido. Exactly. All right. And people look, uh, concern a lot of questions we get is they're in the refrigerator. Do I have to keep them in the refrigerator? Mm. The, we found the, ex the studies show the excessive heat is what bothers them. Right. And so it, it, if you're going on vacation, take enough. You don't have to worry about having it iced the whole way. Just don't leave it in the car in the sun down in Florida this time of year. Um, so a good probiotic is very, very healthy, but that's not the only thing. There really have to be um, good lifestyle chain mm -hmm. um, choices mm -hmm. to help with the immune system. A good night's sleep is one of them, and most of us aren't getting a, mm -hmm. enough sleep. I know my mother used to always say, "Get a, when we went to school, get a good night's sleep or you'll get sick. If you're not mm -hmm. sleeping well enough, the immune system goes down mm -hmm. and you're more prone. Exercise, we're supposed to be mm -hmm. moving, not sitting all day mm -hmm. long. So exercising regularly can be helpful proper diet, a healthy diet. And one thing that I found very interesting, the FDA yesterday just issued new guidelines to all the companies that are making the antibacterial soaps. Mm. And they want them to prove that they're safe for long-term use. And this has been in and out of the literature for a while, just mm. like antibiotics orally, mm. that we're using antibacterial soap. That's all you can find now mm -hmm. in the liquid soap. And we're allowing resistant bacteria to come along. 
Now, there's studies that were done, and I'd like your opinion, that if you wash your hands properly, it's more effective than most of the antibacterials. Thanks. But as our lifestyle gets more hectic, we wash our hands by putting soap on, <laughs> doing this, and we're done. The proper way is to suds both sides under the nails. And the most important thing, according to the CDC, is to do it for 20 seconds. Mm. And if we can't spend 20 seconds to stay healthy, <laughs> something's wrong. But a lot of people say, how do I know how long 20 seconds is? And somebody <laughs> pointed out, if you sing while you're in the bathroom, people might look at you a little funny. The happy birthday song, twice, mm. that's about 20 you always seconds. sing in your head, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And if you sing out loud, everyone will leave you alone. But how, can you explain mm. how healthy choices can mm -hmm. help the immune system as opposed to poor lifestyle mm -hmm. choices, why that can grind you down? I think a lot of people don't think about, you know, say when you're sick, you know, okay, what can I take to, to get this better? Um, obviously not getting sick in the first place is, is, is ideal, then you don't have to worry medicine. about it. Um, so, you know, the washing your hands, trying to not introduce the microbes into your body is great. Um, other things that we don't, you know, doctors may not always talk about are, um, is diet, you know, and what you're eating even when you're sick. So when we think about, um, you know, sugar and excess sugar in the diet or carbohydrates. So a lot of, you know, diets now are, are heavy on those things. Um, they actually decrease your, your um, white blood cells, the cells in your body that fight infection, their ability to work well. Um, and if you think about people with uh, diabetes, they have a higher risk of infection, you know, related to having that higher blood sugar. So if you can, you know, really minimize sugar, at least for the most part, or when you're sick, you know, not a good time to, to go out and eat a lot of sugar, that's really important. Um, and thinking about stress, you know, we always get sick around like the holiday, you know, you're rushing around or you're, you know, have busy time, say at work or, you know, college students, they're home and on exams and they finish exams and, you know, sure enough, they're going to get sick. Um, stress and cortisol is not helpful for the immune system. You know, it's really designed to, for fight and flight, run away from the woolly mammoth and survive, you and know. And calm down and get back yeah. to normal. So, so generally, if we slow down just a little mm -hmm. bit, and just like our cars, you won't, if you need 93 octane, you're not going to use 89 octane. Mm -hmm. Same with our bodies. We really need to give it the fuel it mm -hmm. needs to do its job. Right. And our bodies were designed to be healthy. Right. And we seem to, how can we stress the body and see how much we <laughs> can know. not do Push properly and stay healthy? <gasps> so there's, you know, we notice people, whether it be school or at work, it mm -hmm. seems when somebody comes in with the flu or a bad cold, a third of the people will get sick, a third of the people will get very sick, and a third of the people don't get sick mm -hmm. or just get the sniffles. And that's probably an indication of their health mm -hmm. status and what they're doing to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. right. So I guess prevention is the best <laughs> medicine. There's been a lot over the decades of vitamin C. Linus Pauling did an mm -hmm. awful lot of work. The zinc lozenges and echinacea. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on those? Yeah, so these are great options. Um, all of those three that you've mentioned do help to kill off viruses. Um, they help to boost your body's immune system. So, you know, with cold and flu, most of the time you're kind of just riding the wave until you get better. So, you know, you want to look for things that are going to help your body. It's really your body that's fighting, fighting off these infections. So if you can find, you know, um, things that help your body boost its, its own immune system, you're going to get better faster. Yeah. And the zinc, usually it's in lozenges mm -hmm. because mo it seems most of the viruses enter through the upper that's respiratory right. system. Mm -hmm. And if you're sucking on a zinc lozenge and you're coating the throat mm -hmm. with zinc, that helps protect against that. Mm -hmm. Now, the other caution is too much zinc is no good, so you don't right. want to be chewing on zinc lozenges <laughs> all the time. Everything in um, moderation, I guess. <laughs> there, there are many homeopathics, herbal, nutritional protocols that a lot of practitioners and I recommend for my clients for immune system building. And the nice thing on the functional medicine side and on the health and wellness side is that we're, we seem to be working at what can we do to help the body do what it's trying to do as opposed to what can we do to suppress a symptom. And an example, antihistamines, if you have a runny nose from a cold, an antihistamine blocks 
the muca the histamine so the nose dries up mm -hmm. but that is really in, a, in the long run harming mm. us or extending the cold because the body's trying to flush the virus out. Right. And so we want to do things to help the body. There are enzyme products that we can take. Our white blood cells work along with the enzymes to identify some of the invading bacteria mm. and um, viruses and then release the enzymes to eat holes in their coating which they mm. die. Um, the viruses die and so there's the enzyme products, there are nutritionals, there are herbals, there are homeopathics. Mm -hmm. There's been a problem the last few years on the pediatric side. Mm -hmm. A lot of the products have been pulled off the market because we never really study them properly. Mm -hmm. We just assume a 200 pound adult uses this many milligrams, so a 10 pound child mm -hmm. will use you know, a smaller dose. And the FDA finally found that some of the doses were too high and most of the products weren't effective. So I'm sure you find in your practice, parents are scrambling. Mm -hmm. My child's up all night coughing. <laughs> right. There's nothing, what do I give them? Right. And now there's some great choices. Some of the homeopathics are safe for newborns right through seniors. Mm -hmm. There's no drug interactions. And what, I'd like to, what I like to recommend is that people should talk to their practitioner because there mm -hmm. are healthy choices mm -hmm. to help the body. And if you help the body, you're gonna get to the end point of being over the cold that much faster. Right. What do you? F yeah, I think um, you know, especially with with kids. I have a one and a half year old, so, so you, you right know, when that. he's sick, it's tough. And um, you know, a lot of the over the counters that you might find at a you know CVS or something like that um, really aren't recommended by the Academy of Pediatrics. Really stay away from those for kids. They're not really shown to help at all, and they can be harmful. Even you know Tylenol, uh, simple things yeah. like that. So you have to really be careful. Yeah, Tylenol and the Motrin. I remember when my daughter was born 25 years ago. She had a fever. That was when Motrin came was approved mm. on prescription for infants. And they said, oh, just give her Motrin. That way her fever will be down for eight hours and you'll all sleep. <laughs> and I was thinking back to in school, they were saying ibuprofen is stressful on the liver mm -hmm. and an infant's liver isn't working right. at peak efficiency. So if, thank goodness it's finally out there to the public now that acetaminophen and ibuprofen mm -hmm. shouldn't be taken all the time. It should right. only be used when you need it. Right. And then to give it to kids, mm -hmm. it's really a little crazy. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things. Um, one thing that's coming back, some of the old time remedies are coming back. The bit about putting someone, let's say the, the child into a bath if they have a high fever mm -hmm. and then putting them in, while well, they're damp, in flannel mm -hmm. pajamas, then in bed with three or four blankets and you get the heat, the body Sweat to generate out. more heat <laughs> and the immune system activates at 101 or 102. Mm -hmm. So we're almost hurting ourselves. You have a 99 degree fever and you take Tylenol. Mm -hmm. You're pushing it down. You're not letting your immune mm -hmm. system work. So well, it's similar to the runny nose, right? Yeah. Um, you know, our body produces fever for a reason. It's to kill work off the things it. you don't want there. Now you, you know, as long as it's not over uh, 104 uh, or something right. like that. You know, but if it's excessively high, but it can have its function. Suppression really isn't the best medicine. Not always. Um, <laughs> moving along, um, some of the things that the old time remedies that are really coming back and they work. I know we sometimes recommend people use a neti pot properly mm -hmm. to Love help flush. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very good. Some of the essential oils can help open up the head or if you're a little bit agitated from being sick, a drop of lavender can be very, very calming. Mm -hmm. Chamomile tea can be very, very soothing. And one thing I'd like to discuss is using a humidifier mm -hmm. properly because what happens this time of year, especially in New England, we all have our heat on, even if we're keeping it low to keep our expense yeah. down, but the air can get down to, the humidity can get down to 15 to 20%, which is almost like in a desert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of our defense mechanisms of the upper respiratory system is keeping that tissue moist and a nice layer of mucus on mm -hmm. there. And all night long in that dry air, we're drying it out, which is taking away our first line of defense against mm -hmm. viruses. So having a humidifier running, one, you'll sleep better, you won't be as congested, but very healthy for you, mm -hmm. but you have to make sure you keep it clean. Exactly. And You don't want mold to grow in you there. Ha so. You have water sitting there, yeah. so you don't want to be putting mold and bacteria. What sort of things do you recommend mm. 
to some of your clients? Mm -hmm. Um, well, thinking about kids, so elderberry is good. Um, you know, elderberry helps to prevent viruses from replicating, mm -hmm. and um, you can get it in a syrup. It's kind of sweet, so sometimes <laughs> finding something that kids will take um, can be helpful. Um, there's another uh, homeopathic, um, it's a pelargonium, yeah. and um, that's actually been used in clinical trials. They did a bunch of studies, and it shortens duration of infections like bronchitis, sinusitis, and things like that. So that's something that you can find, um, which can be really helpful. Um, let's see, vitamin D, you know, even making sure your vitamin D level is at a, a good level, so somewhere between maybe 50 to 80 um, for a vitamin D level. So especially in the winter time, New England, no sun, <laughs> Yeah. you know, making and, sure and that you're And that's something that's that very up. interesting. We weren't watching vitamin D levels mm -hmm. for years, and now all of a sudden <laughs> right. we're checking and we're finding a lot of the population yeah, is very low in vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And that's not only helpful for immune system, but bone density. Sure. And people probably need, I mean, in wintertime, I'm finding a lot of people need even 5,000 um, international units yeah. of, of vitamin D a day. You know, and in it's time. a very easy, inexpensive lab test. Mm -hmm. And so people, you know, we recommend when they go for their physical to just mm -hmm. ask to have their D level check once right. in a while, especially this time of year. And then in the summertime, we're not going mm -hmm. out and cooking in the sun That's for true. hours. Yeah. We're wearing long sleeves. Everyone, their moisturizers all have sunscreen in them. That's so, right. vitamin, you know, the sun is unhealthy, but it does have some healthy benefits, mm -hmm. and we need to make sure we're getting... Let's, let's get your 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have any other tips yeah. on how to... Oh, you're talking about, people? you know, old-time remedies. I can remember, you know, what my grandmother did. You have some tea, you put some honey in there and lemon in there, you know. Yeah. Honey is really good for cough. Probably the heat from the tea is good to, you know, help moisturize the respiratory yeah. tract. Um, lemon, your vitamin C. So, you know, yeah. gram grandma And also, <laughs> you, have to, you have to take 10 minutes just to slow down and make the cup of tea That's and right. sit and enjoy it. Probably half of and the we really, benefit. you'll probably find if you take a few minutes every now and then just to unwind mm. and decompress, you'll get a lot more done mm -hmm. during the day and stay a lot healthier. Also, we're, uh, when we're going back to the food, making the healthy choices, mm -hmm. but we're also rushed. We're not, I remember growing up, either my grandmother or my pa my mother, something was always cooking for mm -hmm. dinner. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, they're not mm -hmm. cooking. You stop and get pre-cooked food. Mm -hmm. Then you bring it home and throw it in the microwave. Right. And that destroys the enzymes and right. the good bacteria and a lot of the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So we're really not giving our body what it needs. So it's mm -hmm. no wonder colds and flu are a right. real problem. And in the winter time, you know, the yellow orange um, vegetables have yeah. more vitamin A. So vitamin A is really good for the respiratory tract and immune system. Yeah. Another good thing, garlic is good, you know, yeah. ginger. Eating, <laughs> cooking with it. Um, yeah. Ginger, when you're sick and you're not, feed, your stomach's a little upset, mm -hmm. a hot cup of ginger tea and just sip it is very, very helpful. And it's one of the warming herbs. This right. time of year, we could all use That's a little right. more heat, <laughs> which is very good. <laughs> all right, so I think we came up with some good <laughs> ideas for people. Um, clients and people should really talk to their doctors, their mm -hmm. practitioners, um, their pharmacists, because there are some wonderful things mm. that you can do to help the body, both prevention and when you start getting sick, mm -hmm. you don't have to take something that's going to interfere with your medication or that's going to make you sleepy or keep you up at night. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the worst thing. You take one of the decongestants that mm -hmm. speeds you up and then you don't get a good night's sleep, mm -hmm. <laughs> which lowers your immune system even further. So, you know, be careful when you pick up something on the shelf and really ask questions. And if the person doesn't know the answer, you should look for a new place to get your information mm -hmm. and your products. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess lastly, this is a good time of the year for some nice hearty soups. Mm -hmm. And you know, the root vegetables, all the, the bright, bright colors, mm. make a nice thick soup and have that for lunch. You know, right. real quick and easy to heat it up. It only takes in a pot, not the microwave, a couple mm -hmm. minutes. And really take care of yourself. Dr. Byrne, thank you so much for joining us today and for your expertise and time. And I think you gave our audience a lot of good information. Hopefully we'll be nice and healthy this winter. And I want to thank you all very much for tuning in and joining us. And please join us next month for another edition of Staying Healthy Naturally.